So first thing you want to do is come in here and put your jack on the jack point. Right? Yeah. I'm lined up and good to go. But before you start putting it fully in there, you want to loosen up yes. the lug nut. First thing you want to do is remove this diamond plated hub cap. Just grab it, yank it out. These are 21 millimeter. We have our uh, lug wrench from the car itself. Just work that off. That's probably the hardest part of the whole job. All right, you don't want to trust your life to just a floor jack, so we're gonna go ahead and use a jack stand. Put it right underneath the lower control arm. Just so if the jack fails, it doesn't squish your head. All right, so next thing you want to do, this rotor is not held on by any screws. It's only cap, it's, it's held captive by the brake caliper bracket and the caliper itself. You have two screws right here, or four screws I should say, that we need to remove to get that we're going to do the pads and the rotor. This one right here, these two, this screw, this one right here, 14 millimeter. I know you can't, it's hard to see, but right back here, that holds the brake caliper bracket on. These are 17 millimeters. These are both righty tighty lefty loosies. We're going we're gonna to need to take these off first, and then we'll go ahead and take off the um, brake caliper bracket bolts. Then we can get the rotor off. We have a wrench right here, a 14 millimeter wrench. Pick these up from Lowe's, gunmetal. Wrenches, awesome. So to get this thing off, we're going to be obviously hitting up on this, up towards the top of the engine. Now, I you like to use the palm of my hand. I'll use the palm of my hand to hit this up, but if this bolt is super tight, you might have to get a hammer. And what we'll do is, instead of using the head of the hammer, I'll use this part right here. This is actually a fiberglass hammer, if you yeah. can, yeah. Fiberglass, fiberglass neck. neck. Yeah. If you have one of those, it's even better because you're not going to mar your wrench, but whatever works. So first I'm going to try my palm of my hand. There you go. I was able to get it off. Let's do the bottom one. That's what it looks like. Nothing special. With those two bolts out, you're able to pull the caliper off. Don't ever let the caliper hang from the brake hose, which is right here. You don't want to put undue stress on this brake hose and possibly crack it and have a big old leak. Another thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to push this piston back into the caliper itself. We do this using a C-clamp. The brake caliper bracket bolts the 17 millimeters are usually on there really, really tight, anywhere from, I want to see 80 foot pounds to 100 foot pounds. So I'm pretty sure we're going to have to use the hammer on this. So go ahead and set it up, holding it with one hand. Yeah, I can't get it off. So come here with the hammer. Got it loose. Do the same on the bottom one. There's one, they're the same size and length. Here's the other one. We have the uh, brake caliper bracket off. With the pad still With on. With the pad still on. Note the location of the clips and the direction that those are. Sensors tell you when the uh, brake pad gets low and start making noise. Um, they start making a, scr a screeching sound when the brake pads get really, really low. Why is that? Because metal is rubbing up against metal, right? Yeah. So sometimes this rotor, like if you live in the Rust Belt or somewhere it snows, we're in Southern California, so we don't get a lot of rain here. If this rotor is stuck on, this one isn't. What happens is rust forms between here and here. And the hub and the rotor itself and it fuses together i've had this happen before on another vehicle and what i did was i just got a really big sledgehammer like an eight pound or ten pound sledgehammer and i was replacing the rotors anyways 
but I just went around hitting the rotor at, you know, what, 12, 6, 3, and 9 position to get it knocked off and loose. You also can use a torch possibly to heat this up and try to break the rust free that way as well. I'm going to take this off and we're going to bring in the new rotor, but first I want to show, uh, show you guys putting the new pads in. Yeah, so okay, here's here's the bracket here, the old pads. You can go ahead and pop those out. Just one at a time, I would, so you can know how to put that other piece in. Well, right. we know that this was on top. Well, I'm just saying, you lay the pad next to it and swap the piece. Oh, okay. That's a good way to do it, I'd say. So you can get a pair of pliers or use your hands. Remove the clip. Come on, there's the clip itself. You can barely see that on my black hands. So what you do is you just make sure that we're putting on the exact same spot and you want the sensor this this section right here where the knife is touching goes onto the pad side so you'd come in just like that and see this little pin right here actually goes in that divot on the pad There you go, just make sure it's square. And that's the indicator. This is the brake indicator that your pad is getting too low. So we'll do the same to the other pad. So we have, the, we have the other sensor set up as well. One thing you don't want to do, I've seen guys on other videos on YouTube where they have the dirty paws like I have right here and they touch all this whole surface, your brake, your brake surface area. Don't Don't touch that, don't screw this all up. Don't get your greasy paws all over that. Keep it as clean as you can. So you have brake pad hardware. This kit didn't come with it. I actually got this. These are Omni 5s. I've heard good things about them. But um, some kits come with new uh, brake pad hardware. Th this, this kit didn't. If you have new hardware, go ahead and replace it. You just pop these off. Since I don't have new ones, I'm going to go ahead and clean these ones up and then put, it, put, some little, uh, put some grease on there. So what I have here, I have some acetone. An old rag. I'm going to put some acetone onto the rag and then I'm going to clean these slots on both sides, top and bottom, and on left and right. So you just come in here, oh, brand new. clean those up, get all that old brake, brake dust off. How much better that looks already. Wow. Flip it around. Do the same thing. The reason you want to clean this is where this is where the brake pads slide. So you don't want it binding or sticking anywhere. And then we also need to clean these pins in here as well. Okay, so these are the <clears throat> caliper pins. This is what the brake caliper slides on and you want to go ahead you want to open these up if you can sometimes these are rusted and stuck in there they're gooed up yeah so so once you get these out you're going to want to clean the old grease off of them again you can use brake cleaner acetone you could use um, gasoline if you had it just anything that will take off the old grease and we're going to put new grease on it as well. So this is this is kind of interesting, Bob. Oh, it's got a little clip on it. No, it's a piece of rubber that swells up. Oh. And I usually end up taking it off. So we're going to clean this one as well. Right down here, you have a little piece of rubber. And what I've seen happen over time, over the years, this rubber actually will swell up. And it stops the pin from moving freely inside here. So what I'll do, you can just lift it up like this, pinch it together, and I just end up taking it off. I leave it off. I don't even put them back on anymore. Cause I, I've seen too many times where they'll swell up and just stop, stop the caliper from moving. And then you get uneven brake pad wear and uneven rotor wear. Synthetic brake grease, you can get this from, I picked this one up from O'Reilly's. You can get it from Napa, AutoZone, anywhere. Small little packet. This is no bigger than my hand. If you're not doing this all the time, I have full bottles at home, but I forgot them. 
So then you, what you do, you just go ahead and squeeze some out. I cut the corner. Just apply it to the pin. Take your hand. Get it nice and lubed up. And put it back into the caliper. Make sure it goes nice and freely. Then you want to put the boot over it again. And if you're pushing and it, and it wants to push back out, all you got to do is make a little hole in the vacuum, push it in, let go, and it'll stay in place. Just doing the same thing to the other pin. I've also seen times where inside there, <clears throat> it's been rusty. So you can take like a baby bottle brush or a little toothbrush, cut down, and just clean inside there as well. So the owner's son thinks he's Ricky Racer, so we're going from a solid rotor to a cross drilled and slotted rotor right here. We picked this up at a parts store, Riverside Parts. I'll put up their phone number right now, but if you want, tell them Bundy sent you. Now these are these are not directional. It doesn't matter. This could, we're working on the driver's side, but you could put this on the passenger side. The only time it matters is if these veins inside here are diagonal or are directional, but they're not. They run up and down. And they're perpendicular to the core. They're perpendicular. Yeah. If they're going like this, then it would matter. Okay, now it's not, it's not going to stay in place because nothing's holding it. So let's start bringing back in all the other hardware. So we have the brake caliper bracket. Go ahead, slide that into place. Bring back your 17 millimeter bolt. You can do one of these at a time. It's just a matter of finding the right spot. You'll feel it when it clicks into place, when the bolt actually can go through. So just start the top one by hand. Come and start the bottom one in. You're not going to tighten it down fully. Okay, they're both started, so go ahead, just tighten up by hand. So just like the way we took them off. That's what we're going to do to tighten them down. All right, now we'll bring in the brake pads. Sensors are on the top. So this brake pad is for the outside. Just come in here at an angle. It slides right into place. Do the same on the back. All right, they're both in. Now bring the caliper back in. But before we do that, we got to push the piston back into place. So, we're working with the wrong tools here. This is a 3 inch C clamp. It's best if you had a 6 inch C clamp. You would take the old brake pad, put it here, right here, and then put the C clamp in. What we have though is a uh, stir stick for paint. So, we're just going to go ahead. Just you want to, the, the point is to protect this piston from getting marred. You don't want the surface to be marred or scuffed in any way. So then we go like this, line everything up. And what are we trying to do? And you just slowly compress the piston back into the caliper. It's not a race. Just go nice and smooth. Before I started collapsing the pistons, I actually went ahead, I removed the uh, cap to the reservoir, brake reservoir, right there. Because sometimes if the brake, if the brake reservoir is overfilled, you'll actually get fluid that comes back up and out. Now if that happens, um, Toyota usually has these kind of seals, but on, on the ones that actually click and have a hard cover, there's a seal in there that could break. If you get brake fluid that comes out of here and it gets onto some of your stuff down there, all you gotta do is get water, and water eats brake, brake fluid, and clean up with water will get rid of any, of, uh, any remaining brake fluid. But always check this level after you're done doing a brake job to make sure it's at the correct level. If it's, if it's a little high and you want to take some out, you can always use like a turkey baster to get it out. So we're just collapsing the piston. Okay, it's bottomed out. Now we bring in the caliper. 
get your bolts. I always like to start the top one so it's not has a place to hang. And then do the bottom one. Now these bolts don't have to be as tight as the brake brake caliper bracket. You just gotta snug these down. I'm sure there's a torque spec form, but I usually like to go with uh, what the Germans do, good and tight. 14 millimeter. All right, there you go. That's how you do a uh, front brake pad and rotor job on a Toyota Corolla. And the reason the rotor is still loose is because, how does it get held Oh, it, the rotor gets held on by the lug nuts, the actual wheel and the lug nuts. Otherwise right I'd be looking at it going, hey, what's up with that? Yeah, if you wanted to, while you're putting everything back on, I didn't show this, but if you wanted to, you could just run this lug nut all the way down and keep your cal keep your rotor in place while you're putting all this stuff on if you find it kind of weird this moving around on you. Another thing is, before you take off, go ahead, before you start the car or anything else, press the brake pedal pump ten the, times. Yeah, pump the brakes because the pistons have to come out and touch the new pads and make contact before you'll actually start braking. So if you take off and you haven't pumped your brakes yet, you're gonna it's gonna be a scary ride because you're not gonna have any brakes i won't bore you with the tire going on but uh please like and subscribe whoa it goes to the floor. one you can let him know it went all the way to the floor first time i did it that was crazy i had zero brakes